Uh, my name is Adriel. How long have you been with Payless? Just about two years and a half now. How long have you been in the trade? i say roughly maybe three, three and a half years. Okay. If you include school. Hello, my name is Austin. I've been at Kalos for three years. All right. Well, my name is Britton. I've been with Kalos now for 10 years, a little bit over that, and I am the install trainer. My name is Andrew Schleiger, and I am the residential HVAC service manager. And I've been at Kalos for just over two years. What's your name? No, it's in front of you. Elise. What do you do here at Kalos? I am a customer service representative. My name is Jacob. I've been at Kalos now for just over three years, and I've been in the industry for almost a decade. Uh, I'm Matt. I've been here for four years. I am the residential install supervisor. My name is Sam. I am the commercial service manager here at Kalos. I started in 2016 as a lowly apprentice with zero experience and quickly became the greatest thing that ever happened to this company. What does HVAC stand for? It stands for heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Which do you think is the most important, heating, ventilation, or air conditioning? I guess it depends on where you live. For us, obviously, I think the biggest one is gonna be air conditioning. What is your favorite? Ooh. I like duct design, but I hate doing, dealing with insulation but I like design and airflow. I feel like there is a, it's, it's rewarding to see that everything goes according to what you designed it. But yeah, it's a ventilation, I would say. Okay. What does IAQ stand for? Indoor air quality. Nailed it. What does indoor quality mean? Uh, it can be a numerous of things, but it's, you could say in the process of actually just maintaining and controlling the quality of air that's circling inside of a home. What's one way to improve indoor air quality in a home? Um, there's a number of products that you can do that with. Uh, we have a range from UV bulbs to actually air purifiers that go into them, whether it be the Air Oasis or just a UV bulb on the coil to stop any sort of microbial growth that'll happen on that. Um, there's also depending on who you are, just a couple of different ways to do it. I think there's a slew of products. My favorite one's probably the media filter. It makes it a lot easier um, to install the equipment. And for me, I think it's easiest for the homeowner as well because they only have to change the filter every six months instead of every month. And I don't know about you guys, but it's already August and this year has flown by. So six months went by pretty quick. What does it mean to control humidity? Controlling humidity. Um... Well, there's two things in, in controlling humidity. You have to kind of seal how much you're letting in. That's number one. If, and then you have to get a product or device or equipment that can reject the humidity out, which would be evaporator coil. You do have dehumidification products, but the main step is actually controlling how much you're letting in in order for you to reject whatever is inside of the space. How can a home owner help manage humidity in their home? The most effective way is getting a dehumidifier, um, something that's specifically designed for that. Florida, I mean, you walk outside and we live in a soup, so it's 90% humidity all the time. Outside of that, the next easiest option is going to be getting a high efficiency piece of equipment that has dehumidification capabilities, but it won't control it as well as a standalone dehumidifier will. So I what does relative humidity mean? A relative humidity is the amount of water vapor in the air at a certain temperature um, compared to the total amount it could hold at the same temperature. What is a recommended <coughs> relative humidity range for a home? 50 to 60 percent is the ideal comfort range. Uh, 50 to 55 is what I traditionally recommend. What are some common things that cause high humidity in a customer's home? Well, um, I can speak to some of my own experience on this one. My house is from 1978 with all original windows and doors. So um, with that being said, a lot of my humidity infiltration comes from that, just gaps, cracks, um, you know, not properly sealed doors, uh, deteriorating door seals, things like that would be uh, the first one that comes to mind. Leaving doors and windows open, that's a big one. Um, that's a common one. 
Um, but yeah, beyond that, just general cracks, gaps, um, even things like, you know, outlets and, and switches all have access, you know, direct access to your attic. So those can be small spots for humidity to infiltrate. What is dew point? Um, so they're dew point is at what temperature does the relative humidity start to condensate? $90. So the lovely way that I was explained to it is that uh, if you have a bucket of water, the dew point isn't changing the amount of water in the bucket, it's actually shrinking the size of the bucket. Um, so once you reach that dew point, the water then starts to overflow out of the bucket because the bucket has gotten so small, and that's where condensation comes from. And for me, that was a very nice visual way that I was able to be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Where do we most commonly see the effects of high dew point in the home? Um, high dew point. So generally cold surfaces, if I'm understanding the question correctly. Mm -hmm. Uh, so things like uh, supply vents, that's a common one. Um, when duct connections such as supply plenums are not uh, installed correctly, sealed correctly, um, you'll see some, uh, some high dew points there, condensation. Uh, basically any cold surface is a big one or in very high, uh, hum very humid homes, you can also get some higher dew points. What's a heat pump? A heat pump is a specific type of AC system. It is a system that uses refrigerant both to heat and cool the house by switching the flow of refrigerant. What is the advantage of having a heat pump over a furnace in our market? For our market, it's more efficient. Um, typically, depending on where you are, especially newer developments, there's not a lot of natural gas or gas systems even applicable. So you'd have to add a whole layer to that if you wanted to get a gas system. And the gas systems only really come into play furnaces when the temperature outside gets to a certain temperature below the point. But heat pumps nowadays are more efficient anyways, so they can even operate at lower temperatures. We have these high heat um, units now that can operate at much lower temperatures than they could recent or previous years. So it just makes it a little bit easier. What is VOC? VOC stands for Volatile Organic Compound. What is that? Give us some examples of that inside the home. I think one of the most helpful examples is off-gassing. So you bring in uh, a new sofa, you bring in a new rug, you throw a lick of paint, um, and it just smells different inside your home. That is that particular item kind of giving off its gases. Um, so new, yeah, new appliances, new um, things in the home environment that just smell different. Um, also candles, uh, essential oils, uh, Chemical, certain chemical compounds um, like the acetone, like nail polish remover, um, things that kind of smell um, are usually a VOC, volatile organic compound. A heat pump is a split AC system, uh, a condenser and an air handler connected by uh, copper. Okay, and so it can run in, run in heating and cooling. Split system uh, is a indoor unit versus outdoor unit connected by copper. So straight cools versus Heat pumps are all the same, mini splits as well. Uh, what are the different type of split systems that are options for homeowners? Uh, you have the heat pump split, also the furnace split with the straight cool condenser where the furnace will operate in heat mode. Uh, you also have mini splits. Then going from there, you have the higher efficiency ones, fully variable communicating systems that are much smarter than I am. So uh, the V in HVAC, mm -hmm. what is ventilation? Ventilation is the way that your house breathes or doesn't breathe. Um, some situations we don't uh, want any outside air coming in. Um, in some situations we do want outside air coming in. We want some fresh air. But ventilation is how we get the air to move in a space. What's one way to improve ventilation in a home? Um, fresh air intake into a dehumidifier um, with a filter. So then what's the best way to control ventilation in a home? residential home. Ventilation, uh, ventilating dehumidifier, absolutely, hands down. What does SEER stand for? S-E-E-R. SEER stands for Seasonal Energy Efficiency Ratio. Final question. Yes, sir. How can a homeowner increase the efficiency of their home? 
first and foremost, make sure that the machine is operating properly. Um, make sure that fan, uh, fans are clean and coils are clean, making sure that the uh, refrigerant charge is dialed in appropriately, appropriately, it doesn't have too much, it doesn't have too little, um, is first and foremost, that's what we check right away. Um, and then additionally, um, insulation, um, the home's envelope, um, how tight the home is or isn't, um, adequate insulation, proper windows, um, would be where we look.